have fun. Describe your work almost as an introvert's work. That's why you can What's the name of the space again? Common space. Common common space, that's right. Yeah. Very small space. Very small space. Very cute, right? It's much better in Mandarin. It is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's more poetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like I listen to a podcast called Tu Do. Tu Do. Yeah. <laughs> cute. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's much cuter in Mandarin than if you just translate it into like potato. Yeah. In English, it's not so cute. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> English like potato. Like yeah. What? Yeah. What are you going to do in common space? You say you're going to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to build a cave. Why a cave? Because I've been thinking uh, a lot about caves recently. And I, you know when we when you gave me the recipe to do to hmm. the idea, right? That was a trip where it was my first time going to a cave. What kind of cave was it? Uh, the, we went to two caves. One is like Yoshidai Cave, which is like the longest cave in Japan, but uh, another artist, he wanted to go to a smaller cave. Um, it's a little, little bit far off. When you say it's the longest, you think it's like more than one kilometer? Yeah, I think so. Right, yeah. right. Then I went to another cave. Uh, that one was uh, more spacey, more mysterious. There are parts right, where uh, you just have to wander around with a torchlight. So if you switch on the torchlight, it's completely dark. Mm -hmm. So there's a very strong sense of presence. Uh, what kind of presence? I don't know, it's just like, okay, it feels like a space where kind of between this world and, and another, um, which I'm interested in. But it's also the idea of a cave, right? At first you, you go in with a lot of fear that like you are meeting the unknown. You are not sure what lies inside. Your imagination goes so wild. Uh, it's also kind of symbolic of the, maybe the hidden fears. So, so I've, been, I've been thinking a lot about the, the symbolism of cave. Then going into common space. Uh, I like the texture of this That's space. not a very dark space. But if you switch off the light, it's completely dark. But I, I, don't, I don't mean the aura of the space. Of common space is not dark at all. But uh, I, I was intrigued by the, by the surface of the space. So when you say you're going to build a cave, do you mean like it would look like a cave? Mm. Or to be just being I think it will I don't I don't think it will look like a cave, but the the it will be like a cave with with the more spacey elements. Like water, um light shadow. Mm. I think that's the part. <laughs> but it's nice to frame it like a cave but because caves have this sense of danger. But when you emerge from, from a cave you feel hunger, right? Kind of like uh like the so it's like a space of transformation. Mm. So actually the installation at Common Space doesn't have to be a cave. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking of framing it as such. Uh. But it, does, it really doesn't, because the main point is um, I'm trying to create a, uh, a meditative environment uh, where people just concentrate on one thing. Mm -hmm. So you go there, you feel like, like uh, What's that one thing? you're just there. What's that drunkards? I think I'm, <laughs> I'm giving away too, too much. No, it's not. Um, not at all. Then the title I'm thinking is uh, the eternal is the present. Mm -hmm. So basically the idea of how I'm going to talk about basically that we only have a now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you ever feel like escaping from anywhere? I don't know. Uh, that's one question I've always had for you because for you, um, I often feel like the escape you take is first internal. Mm -hmm. Like you escape into yourself. Yeah. And that's in the same in some ways it's the same for you as escaping somewhere. So escaping somewhere is the same is in order to escape to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you escape somewhere in order to be in some ways meet yourself again. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you meet yourself when you also meet yourself again inside so that you can find that someplace else. You know, let's say you are not happy here. Right, then you mm -hmm. would escape into yourself in mm -hmm. order to find it somewhere else. But there's somewhere else is internal, right? Do you mean that? Uh, in the second case, mm -hmm. it is, but it's also not. 
Do you know what I mean? It's like that scene in Harry Potter when when, when Voldemort finally strikes him with mm. a spell, and then he appears in King's King Cross Station. Uh, Harry had one last question and said, "Hold on, look, is this place real, um, mm. or is this just in my head?" Mm. Um, so Dumbledore's question is, "Of course, it's in your head, Harry. Mm. Why? Why is that any less real?" Mm. Yeah, I think I wouldn't be like that. Uh, but in the escape is also a kind of returning, like a recentering. But it's mostly to yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's just what I think mean, for you, I think you reset a lot back into a, a self that you're comfortable with. So I think a lot of your questions have, has a lot to do with who you want to be. Who I want to be. Yeah, or who you are. I think, um, maybe, yeah, maybe I want to be. I think it's maybe it's more who I am. Um, but art making is also one way of getting at that. I, like, for instance, I do a lot of walking. Mm. So, so like, uh, that is another way of. Did you do that before? Like, like, huh? Before COVID? Mm, including <laughs> during COVID as well. Parks is okay, but like, Oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, because some people only started during COVID. That's all. Oh, is it? No, yeah. no, no. Like all along, it's like. Yeah. Like it got a bit intensified during COVID because there's nowhere else to go. And so right, right. Like the yeah. park is like a highlight. Right. Grocery shopping is like the most exciting day of the <laughs> day. So so yeah, a lot of walking. So walking is one way. Meditation is one way. Making art is one way. But they all have the same. And now with the COVID project, it's like kind of two in one. Huh? Mm. So you can meditate and then it's also hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I want that meditative feeling for other people, I, I don't know if um, it will be successful. I don't know, I hope it will be. Um, I, I, some, I prefer to describe your work almost as an introvert's work. That's why interviews scare me, huh? Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> well, stressful. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of your work that when you produce something, it is. Even though it's something out there in the world, it is all, it's often, in fact, in, in, if not all the time, it's, all, it's often about an interior journey in an interior space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're either inviting, and you often are in an introvert in such a way that you're not really even inviting the audience into your head. You're just asking the audience to go inside their own heads. <laughs> That's one thing I'm very cautiously trying to do. Yeah. Mm. Because I don't want I want to keep my very very private. Like it's personal, but it's not but you I, like your work is personal, but I want people to read it in relation to themselves. Yeah, but they're not gonna read it mm. in relation to themselves through you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no need to read it. You know, the way that songwriters write lyrics, often they write Beautiful love songs, but it's their breakup, right? Mm. And then we feel amazing things because we feel through them. Mm. Yeah. But for you, it's not quite that. Right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You choose a different process. Yeah. Yeah. You you basically set up the space, and then you're like, no, no, you're you are still outside mm. my head. Yeah. I'm gonna set up this space for you, but you know, let's keep it myself. <laughs> No, no, I think you are very, very right. Mm. Right. Like, like, mm. So there's this interesting tension actually about this notion of freedom. Mm. Yeah. I guess I don't want, I don't want people to know too much about me. I guess. But the work is personal, so it's like I'm thinking how do I work around that? Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's this interesting like love language thing. Like it's mm. really about you know how what's the most net. What's the most instinctive way for you to, to uh, express love to someone? Mm. Yeah. And have, have you ever done that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, it's touch. Mm. And so do you, see the, do you see your work as being very tactile? I see the visuals as tactile. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, like, it's not, for me, it's almost like a caress. Mm. Mm. And then, it's also the, my, my, when I sequence images, it's also like a song. Mm. So there's a flow. Uh, 
and then there's there might be a pause, there might be a full stop somewhere. I, I hope people will get it. I'm not sure if uh, I do before I show or generally I test it with a few people to see the reaction before I show it in public. So when I sequence it, I do think of it like a song in my head. Uh, sometimes it's loud, sometimes it is quiet. But in in general, my images uh, veer more towards the quiet side, mm. almost like an instrumental. Mm. So that's quite beautiful, actually. I hope so. I think you say that more often. <laughs> okay. Like I think I think that that's a really I think that's a really really nuanced really. So accessible and mm. opening into the world. Well, so for some people, I don't think it will be that as well. I think some, some people would actually tell. Mm. Yeah, it looks again like it's like a rough edge. Like some people approach things better by reading. Mm. You know, and other people are really, really like yeah, oral. You know, like if you tell them that um, approach by words like a song, it actually I think some people the, the world might suddenly just open up. Mm. Okay. Mm. And the idea for my next artist yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also like my work. But that's why I try not to say what emotions I put into the work because I want the work to be, in a way, open. So so that so I let people tell me what emotions they, they feel instead of me telling. Okay, this is a work about sadness, melancholy, blah blah blah. I don't want to close it now. I want to open it up. Mm. So in my installation as well, that's why you see it's like open association images here and there, whether they're for you or what. Okay. Mm. It's kind of drawing, almost like a dream, dream state. Mm. Impressions, memories. Mm. And what's your feeling? What's your what's your strongest feeling that you have when you're at Krishna? Come. Peaceful. Yeah. But you felt that up to now, this is before. Hmm. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Usually when I'm in meditation. And basically relatively alone now, right? Mm. And then you spend more on what? And do you think that made it into your work? That made it into my work? Mm. Um, sometimes. But sometimes in that quiet, when you are when you are trying to be quiet, I mean, you try to be still. Of course, stuff in you comes out, right? So that the stuff that comes out may not be very comforting or, or quiet. So that stuff also goes into the work. It may be a bit dark, but it, I mean, I, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like what are the darker things that went into the work? Mm. I mean, okay, see the Iceland images, a lot of people say it's a little bit uh, bleak. That's yeah, we talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's so late. laughs> but uh, to me, there's a lightness we should get, especially at the back. There's a sense of wonder. Uh, so, the, so to me, the work is not just uh, you know, negative, but it's hope and Tragedy, okay, and all mixed up together. Yeah. And it's not very dark to me. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's something about your recent work that is really happening when you are getting like almost like a wide cosmological panoramic view of nature. You know, where you really get to see stars. Mm -hmm. you know, Sit under a white sky, like a big white sky with no buildings around. Mm. Um, so there's something about also you within that kind of scale, mm. right? That, that, that also enters the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that there's something about you and that kind of scale that you're very drawn to as well. Mm, the expense. Yeah, mm. and the bigness. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's like it's at I guess like the, the vastness, the expansiveness of landscapes of the night sky or space gives that a breathe a little bit lighter now and then. Yeah. Mm. 
It's so, like even you said you were saying that even in the cave world you have this like the eternal. This is very big. Yeah. So I think there's something about you that's very drawn to um, something much much larger than yourself. Yeah. But I also wanted to draw attention to how like the everyday moment is precious. Mm. Like don't don't look to some uh, individual religious experience right. or some spectacular landscape. Something like snow on the ground it can be can right. feel quite magical, you know. Water dripping onto a puddle can be quite wondrous in its own sense. Which is how I remember your objective works, like you're often about very small mm. like you know, very the detail. details of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this has their uh, own beauty, which I think I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I just look for the, 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 the most eye catching, but the quiet, the, the small, the tiny mm -hmm. details. Do you see like the world that you made five years ago, and then you go, wow, this is a really different person? Um, like before you left the UK? Different but the same. Mm. How so? Um, I think different in different in that the state. Um, okay, maybe talk about the same person. Same is still the same person. The emotions that I know why they are kind of overlapping with and the way of air. But different approaches in that with and with, I'm not, I abandon the camera, but just play material in, within the process. Yeah, instead of experimenting with materials at the end of the, um, the creative process, which means like printing out fabric, printing out different paper, all that, but that is at the end, right, of making out image. But here, the materials comes into the uh, process of the making of the image. Mm -hmm. And now in common space, the material doesn't really come into the making of image. The material is the material itself. I'm combining it with the image to see what comes out. Mm -hmm. So there's a small shift in, in the practice. But is that because you feel like photography is not enough at mm -hmm. the moment for some reason? Um, I guess I'm, uh, I guess I, I don't know. I don't really just want to limit myself to photography. I used to be a writer. So I was, when I, until I, before I, I mean, I worked for magazines, but there was a point where I felt stuck. Then I turned to photography. And now I think, I feel like experimenting with something else and being more object. So maybe it's like playing with different mediums to see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I think for a long time I couldn't write because I felt like writing has these rules, right? And to, in order to communicate, in order to be coherent, there's grammar rules. You, have, you kind of have to write in a sequence. I mean, uh, so I felt like it's too harsh. The truth in front of me is too harsh. Right? I don't want to face what I, what I'm writing. So I work around that by using visuals, which what which was which is something I wasn't familiar with. Right? So I can can I work around my subconscious without being too direct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, did you ever felt that photography brought you back to writing as a result? Like, did photography help you to access writing in a different way, a different way, or did you make it easier or different? I think photography helped me to express certain things in me that made me more and um, that made me more comfortable with those those stuff, and then now I can write again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was writing ever easier as a photography? Like there was were there were times you feel like the writing just flowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was the? Um, no, what those moments? I think when you say if you're writing about something and you feel and you acknowledge the feeling, the writing can just flow. Mm. But when the feeling is something that you are trying to deny or trying to repress, you get stuck. And that's why for me, it, it was something happened that I don't want to face what happened. So it, the, the, all the, the ripple effects, the emotions, whatever, get stuck and they're blocked, right? And I don't know how to unblock them through writing. Mm. 
that's how I understood it. And that's why I turned to a medium that I don't know how to use or didn't know how to use. Because there's a freedom there. When you don't know the rules, you can do whatever you want. Mm. And when you, when you do whatever you want, you may not understand completely what you're doing. But when you look at what you're doing, it helps you to understand. Okay. Mm. okay. That makes sense. Did you try anything different during the pandemic? Um, I guess what I meant is the lockdown. Huh? Did like, you try anything different in the past Ooh. six months? Like because you cannot, you know, you cannot really go to the studio. Yeah. You yeah. cannot really go out and shoot. Oh, I began to. So, in a, so when I use a camera, it's usually like a very casual style. Like I just walk and shoot, like walk and shoot, walk and shoot. And I couldn't do that in, during the whole because I could break the. So I began to pick things up. And take it home and I try staging things to <laughs> show. Yeah, so some I made some images. Yeah. What did you take home? Um, but save uh, my flowers and leaves around. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. But I also start shooting things at home in say a, a microscope or something, playing with light, doing things on scale. I mean like that's <laughs> really right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, where can I get this on one way? I feel not water the But you have any more questions? Um, no, no, like I said, it's very that this thing is really isn't as bad as you. Yeah. So what's your what's your <laughs>